casting is all about its tension. It's about maintaining tension on the line as much as possible throughout the whole process of casting. And with all the videos I've done, you can see that I've talked about basics, I've talked about little stuff. But what I want to do here on the Skagit Double Spay, our style of Double Spay, is to go through every freaking point. You may, it may seem confusing. You'll have to watch it a bunch of times, pick it up. You'll have to practice it a lot to put it all together. But this is everything you need to know about this cask. Because the basic, I'm not really gonna talk about the basic base here. I'm talking about all the little stuff. And you've heard me talk about this before. Great casting. You got basics, foundation, that gets you casting. Great casting comes from these little tiny hints that you string them, you, you learn them, and you put them all together, and that elevates your casting to the next level, all right? So there's a lot to see here, a lot to think about. And I guess the best way would be to just start with what I talk about, number one, and then go to number two, and go to number three, go to number four. And a lot of this I repeated. A lot of this you'll have to hook up with a golf ball video. And so we're gonna start right now. The, uh, Fly placement, not, these short lines, it's not that critical, guys. You don't have to be exact. And what is fly placement? You know, I hear all this stuff. Once again, I'm not talking about other styles. I don't want to comment. I'm in Skagit style, lines three and a half times the rod length or shorter. I really favor two and a half anymore. But our lines are so short, it's easy to get the fly in the proper place. Don't get critical and don't, Instead of thinking about why the fly has to be, I, I can't even remember the reason that people say it has to be there. The other way to think about it is, the closer the fly is to me, the more line is behind me. That line that's behind you is your D-loop. The closer the fly is to you, the more line you have in the D-loop, the more line you have in the D-loop, the more energy you develop during the sweep or the swing through, as I like, would hope or wish that I had named it instead. So, short line. The other thing is, it's a lot slower process than my double spay is what I call a high double spay because I keep, the, you don't see me flop the rod or do these weird I don't mean to cuss there. Uh, it's literally, I take the rod, I want you to watch how slow and deliberate this is. All right, we get to the hang down, the line's taut, doesn't have to be straight, just has to be taut, which means that if I pull the rod one inch, the fly moves one inch. Watch this, I just take the rod, and then I, like a spear up, lift just enough, and then turn, you see me turn at the waist, and literally skitter or drag, I don't know when I use the word drag, it's more of a skitter. So it's here, watch the rod, and watch the hands, and watch the waist. See the line behind me? Key, right there. If the line's behind me, as soon as I start to move the rod, I've got tension and I've got load. If the rod tips here and the line's like this, you have to move the rod all the way over to here before you actually start to develop tension and load on the rod. So it's important that little kick around, poke the sky, turn at the waist line behind me. Now, as soon as I move the rod, I'm developing a tension relationship with the water surface there. Now, the next thing is, because I've kicked around behind me, you heard me talk about curvaceous, semicircular. If I flop the rod here, the tendency is to make an angular, angle change here or literally to make a straight line movement here. Bad, bad, bad. If I bring the rod here, in order to get it back here, I have to first go out. That is one of those key little moves right there. To always go away first before you come around, no matter which cast it is. It's really obvious on the double spay because of the fact, watch this, here, and because it's there. Now I have to go out there to cast. I have to go out, then come around to go into the D loop. All right, it's really obvious. So that's the lift, the hook around here, the outward movement. Now, 
that you're watching or you know about that, you got to hook that up. This may be hard, unfortunately, because of the camera angles. When I get here, watch what I do with my, if you can see it, hopefully. Watch how I cock my wrist. Up, here, you see that? Can you see that? Now that helps me to go out and around. That's, I've talked about this before on my videos. When I'm coming this way, point, roll your wrist into the sweep in the direction you go so that your thumb is pointing in the direction you're sweep. It's another one of those little things. It's a little thing, doesn't feel like it does much. But you add it up to all this stuff, casting is going to really, really take off. Stuff takes practice, takes a while to learn, but it's worth it. It makes, and I don't want to brag, but you know, one of the comments I get all the time is, oh, you make your cast look effortless like you're doing nothing. It's because all those little things you put together, all those little things put together, make it that way, okay? So here goes the process. Up. I'm not going to turn at the waist because I want to leave my... Uh, hands out here where you can see that wrist cock around, all right? Here, here, out. You see that no big explosions, no noise? They talk about scatter casting being, uh, uh, you know, clunky and noisy. Where? You do it right. You do it right, it's not clunky, it's not noisy. Clunky comes from a linear movement right here. Backstop, clunk then forward, all right? Don't do that. So here's the next thing, the out and around. I'm out and around here, and I continue around in a 45 direction here, which means to go forward, I need to bring the rod to the inside, cast forward. So that's all a very big, curvy, semi-circular movement, all right? There's no stop here. What appears as a stop from the side, if you're looking straight down, it's not a stop. It's a drift of the rod from here to here so that I can now go forward. And here's another little tiny thing. If you need to get the most line speed tight loops, when you think that you're here coming around and then drifting over to vertical and going forward, you're probably not vertical. I know I'm not, but if you really want to tighten stuff up and get some line speed, mentally picture trying to hit the side of your head with the rod as you go forward. All right, we're gonna do that. So once again, here we go. I'm not gonna use my waist. There's the turn, out. Literally, I thought, now I don't know from the back, maybe it was vertical or slightly less, but I was thinking, man, I'm gonna pass that rod and be real close to my head, almost hit my head. Let me do it one more time. So, here, around. And it, you can see there's no, you know, I'm not going whack to make the forward cast. It's very smooth. It's all really, really smooth. Okay, so here's another. Ah, oh, I lost them. Damn. <laughs> here's another thing. This is, I think, one of the biggest problems that most people don't know about is they make the cast. Maybe hard to see the packet. They're lift, watch when I'm lifting here. Then they're gonna sweep around. This is, they stick the butt. So you see what my lower hand is, right? Stuck right there. See how everything stayed on this side of my waist? Your actual sweep, when you come around a sweep, when you're at the end here, your hand should be on your opposite, your lower hand should be on the opposite hip or at least centered on your body. And you won't believe how much of a difference that'll make in your casting. Now watch. But you gotta learn here, it's a pivot. Did you see it pivoted right here, which brought my rod butt over here, not here. Huge, huge difference. Hard to learn, huge difference. Okay, so back to the hand positions. Just go over real quickly here. 
rotate, and around. This turning like that, there's a name for it. It's called supinate, pronate. And the way that you remember what they are, there's a nurse that finally told me this at one of the instructionals. I think it was the one in Montana. Is supinate is like you're holding a bowl of soup, all right? Pronate would be, it's just the opposite, this way. So supinate, pronate.